What up, what up, what up? You tuned in to the Jose Morales podcast where we talk sports, business, and everything in between. I am your host, Jose Morales, and we're at my boxing academy. Joining me in the ring today is Justin Buckles. Say what's up, Justin. I got I to gotta say I like your studio. You do? You know? Yeah, this hey. is a nice studio. It's hey. a boxing ring. It's amazing. Yeah, you know thank I mean? you, brother. That's I'm... a true That's a true boxing coach. Yeah. Had the studio in the ring. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So th this is what I wanted to, uh, I kind of want to add. I want to do it in the gym. It adds yeah. that feel to it versus yeah. just doing it in the studio. Real. Yeah, real. Exactly. I noticed, too, when I came in your gym that it smelled very pleasant and clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got to thank my nephew, Eric, for that, man. He gets down at cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, we want to make sure it's sanitized, especially during these times right yeah, now. Everyone's that's a hot crazy. topic right now. Yeah. <laughs> I see a lot of MA coaches and stuff. They're like cleaning like the gloves. I'm saying. Wouldn't you, shouldn't you already been doing that? Yeah, you should have already been doing that. And cleaning gloves did not stop the coronavirus. You know what I mean? The coronavirus did not sneak in your b building and getting the gloves like in the last week it's just now getting to america people are panicking they're freaking out about it it's uh i've kind of stayed out of it i was up on the mountain the other day i kind of stayed out of the the coronavirus thing but yesterday i took the day off and i looked at the news and i read everything about it and it's quite the panic man yeah you could you could tell by going to the stores and everything they're tripping out you know the big lots across from me i haven't noticed any effect there's plenty of toilet paper nobody's in there like well actually there's there's a few people in there, but it's not it's never packed. It's still not packed, and it seems exactly the same, you know. So if people need toilet paper, big lots don't go to my big lots. No, no, not no. West Side. <laughs> Stay out of that because I got everything I need there. Oh, you know what I mean? Shit. Well, I went yeah. today. I've been trying to find something. I can't find shit. No way. Yeah. I'm, Where'd you I've go? Been, Costco. I went to two different Costco's. I well, went to Smart and Final. Costco is the epicenter. Everyone. Yeah. In a panic, everyone goes to Costco. Yeah. Stay the heck out of Costco right now. I need now. to go somewhere else. Yeah, the Big Lots, big a local lots. business. Big Lots. I'm going to go to Big Lots. Yeah, try Big Lots. Hey, and I, <laughs> I was just telling you about, what about outdoors you like so much, man? Every time I see your IG story or something, this guy's outdoors on Simone. You're from Alaska. That's it. Is that what caused it, started it, or what? Or That's what caused it, exactly. I'm a product of my environment, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in Alaska, you step outside and... There's the northern lights, you know. This mm -hmm. is just a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing people see. The Japanese have the most amazing regard for Alaska. There's a hot springs in my hometown that there's – all the signs are in Japanese because Japanese people go up there. Uh, because in Japan, if you're conceived under the northern lights, you'll live a blessed life. That's what they think. So they go up there and they start – doing their thing you know like in the hot spring it's like hey get you know do whatever you want to do on your own time leave the hot spring alone don't get too close in there you know need a sanitary environment like we're talking about but uh you know that that's what they actually believe you know they, they, it, it's it's uh funny alaska is the only place that's been invaded in america since the war of 1812 and it was invaded by the japanese you know and the aleutians and eskimos in alaska they, they look like japanese people mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting there, there's a weird connection there so how did you end up in Alaska? You're, you're, well, I was born there. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, but your family and everything, because you're Filipino, right? Yeah, I'm half. My mom, my mom is Filipino. Okay, so your and mom my is dad, Filipino and your dad. And my dad is a cowboy from Wyoming, you know. Okay, so how so, did they end up? How did Alaska come about in your family? You were born there. How did, how was So that? my dad went up there uh, to work on the pipeline, uh, which is 800-mile oil pipeline from uh, Prudhoe Bay that spans the entire the entire state. The state is 800 miles from the Arctic Ocean to the uh, Pacific Ocean. And a pipeline goes all the way down from the top. Uh, and it was one of the most amazing engineering projects the world has ever seen to span this uh, state because it's an Arctic uh, frontier. You know what I mean? It's, it can be, in my hometown, Fairbanks, which is, uh, it has the largest temperature swing of any city in the world is considered a city. It has 30,000 people. I actually live north of that in Fox, Alaska, further north. So all the people stopped at Fairbanks, and then my dad ended up settling 10 miles north in a place called Fox. Mm -hmm. And Fairbanks is known as the gateway to the Arctic. So Fairbanks is the last stop. Then you have the Arctic, and you have the Arctic Ocean. And from there, it's ice until the North Pole. You know what I mean? And there's plenty of ice up there. A lot of people think that uh, the polar bears are out there drowning, but the North Pole is frozen <laughs> year round, still is. And the, uh, the difference in ice per year is, is pretty crazy. So it's, it's very hard to track, especially since we only have information on the ice cap for the last 30 years. You know what I mean? So it's very hard to predict the state of it because it's such a variable of the amount of ice each year that freezes up there. But anyways, 
uh, Fairbanks has the largest temperature swing of any city in the world going from like 98 degrees in the summer sometimes, 96 degrees in the summer to 60 below in the wintertime, you know? Oh. So that, that's quite the swing, you know? Hell yeah, that's a swing. One time I was working on the North Slope in the oil field and I flew to Hawaii and I went from uh, 77 below was a, I, did, I, I did a work day in 77 below. Now that's not 77 below ambient where that's 77 below with a wind chill. So I remember it was 30 below ambient. We had to shut down the crane. We weren't allowed to use the crane because at 30 below steel can break like glass. You know, there's all kinds of weird things happened at 30 below to heavy equipment. So for safety reasons, we turned, couldn't use the crane. The wind was blowing. It was, it was at least 30 below and the wind caused it to go to 77 below. So if you're standing behind a windbreak, it's 30 below. But as soon as you step in the wind, the wind caused it to be 77 below, and that's what will really frostbite you. And I worked a day in that, and then I, for my uh, time off of my job, I flew to Hawaii, and I went to, it was like 87 degrees. So I went from 77 below to 88, 87 degrees, you know, over a hundred degree temperature swing in a plane ride, you know? It, it's interesting, it's just a very interesting place. It's like the last, if you think about like the history of America and westward expansion in California, us here, uh, it started in the East Coast. The craziest people came to the West Coast, you know what I mean? Searching for gold and land and settling. And uh, the craziest people, Went, went all the way west and the even crazier people went north <laughs> as far as they could go and they stopped at Fairbanks and my dad and my mom they settled in Fox which is 10 miles north so it's an interesting it's, a, it's interesting growing up and living there and then living in Sacramento the capital city you know what I mean <laughs> the liberal capital of the world right here is Sacramento it's the California is the biggest uh, fifth biggest economy in the world as a state you know, America being the number one, China being number two, but as a state inside the economy, California is number five. It's more than Canada or Australia. They're like yeah. seven or eight or whatever. So California in itself is making that much money. And we're in the capital city of the richest state in the richest country in the world. So it's quite, quite the difference from going from a, a real frontier life to, to uh, a life of luxury as they say you know yeah I can and see see, seeing all the the first world problems that happen down here i've talked to two people that's that have been to every state in the u.s and oh, both wow. people that t two people that did that told me <laughs> alaska is the most beautiful one out of all of them <laughs> really yeah they both said that wow and different times they didn't even know each other nothing. yeah they weren't they, co like collaborated behind they yeah they, and they was... both told me alaska is the most beautiful one out wow. of all the states wow so fun fact yeah. um anyways what brought you to sec what, how did Sac come, Sacramento come about? Why Sacramento? Why did you stay here? What? So me and my buddy, uh, we started fighting MMA. He's now Trooper of the Year uh, in Alaska. He joined the state troopers, and state troopers are like the special forces of uh, cops, you know. Uh, but we started fighting together in a, in a show called AFC Alaska Fighting Championship. And uh, we were both actually working on the North Slope at the time. He was working for BP, British Petroleum. And I was working for Norcon as a pipe fitter. Uh, a union pipe fitter and he was like uh he ran the facility you know what i mean he'd come and read monitors and he's a petroleum engineer he had a degree meanwhile i was installing pipe you know like we were flying pipe in and installing it and putting oil wells well the, so a drill rig would come by and drill a well and then we would connect that well to the facility like we would run the pipe and uh we, we'd also do uh special projects our company but we're the only union contractor up there uh, local 375 uh, Alaska pipe fitters control all the pipelines in the state. Uh, 798 is the big union down here, and they are always sending guys up. The best welders they have of the contiguous United States, the lower 48, get sent up to Alaska, and they, they hope to work for 375 because it's the most stringent welding um, standards in the world because it's under crude oil. You know what I mean? It, it's getting pumped through this stuff. But anyways, we were both working up there and we decided to fight. We were both uh, boxing. He was actually the, the Fairbanks uh, tough man champion, Fairbanks Alaska tough man champion. And he would beat the crap out of, so I mean, it was, um, it was, you know, it was like uh, all smokers, but it was professional. He'd be getting paid 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. This is 20 years ago, selling out these shows with, uh, you know, 2,500 people at the dog mushers hall and at the Carlson center. Uh, but he was fighting in those and I was amateur boxing 
and uh, I was the best amateur boxer in the state because I was the only guy that showed up one year. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like they didn't have the state. They didn't have any Hey, man, and, and this is what I tell my fighters to this day. You know, showing up is 99% of it. Yeah. Showing up is 99% of it. If you don't come to train, you're not going to get a good workout. You can sit there and stress and say, oh, I need to hit miss. I need to do this. I need to do this. Or you show up at the gym and, and work. All toiling, all work is a righteous task. You know, if you work hard, there's good results. Yeah. But uh, I like that. Right. No, exactly. per- period. It is labor. Labor is mm. is something that our society today has just, I don't know, completely disrespected. They think for you to be uh, have status in, in modern America, you have to be behind a computer, you know, like some point Dexter thinking of something, you know, compared to someone who puts in cabinets, yeah. I mean, put in cabinets, have fun doing that, make that square level perfect and where you can s- sell this to uh Eddie Murphy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to think of a celebrity, but somebody, somebody <laughs> who Murphy people actually live in Sac. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> the Sacramento connection right yeah, there, yeah, like you know? That. Nah. Uh, but ha- having that kind of quality and standard to, to that craftsmanship, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and, and I think labor and craftsmanship is something that is super important that what built our society and it's kind of just disrespected for what people think is like, I don't know, intellectual kind of or technological. Uh, or even athletics that they hold in a higher regard to the working man. You know what yeah. I mean? If we didn't have a guy to install our toilets, to unclog our drains, which is a plumber, and I was a pipe fitter plumber, plumber pipe, pipe fitter, it's the same thing. There's no difference in pipe from an oil well to a toilet. It's the same principles. You know what I mean? Uh, but, um, yeah, I think, I, think, uh, I think America needs to get back to that, to respect the working man and uh, uh, pay them accordingly, you know? Yep. Because that's, that's what built, the, built this country. Exactly. Very true. One thing I love about you, man, you're... <laughs> Is that I go off subject every which way? No. That's <laughs> not. One thing that I love about you, because I those that do not know, Buckles, they, he actually, I have him in the corner with me when my pros fight. So when Tony and David fight, I usually bring him along. And, and the guy who connected us is Mike, my man, Mike Ortega. Props to him. He's actually the one who introduced me to you. And um, one thing that I like about you having you in the corner is how relaxed you are and how well you do at, um, what's the word, echoing what I'm saying mm. versus, because there's sometimes when people are in the corner where the- Well, when, the, I, when I'm cut man for you, you're, you're the head corner, you're running the show. I'm a cut man. I'm a Stitch Duran. I'm a, yeah, I'm, a, uh, I'm a Don House. I'm a- uh, this kind of this kind of guy, I'm playing that role, which is back you up. You're the head, and worry about the cuts, and stay the hell out of the way. Exactly. You know what I mean, that, but I love it how you do so well at it, though. Like it's like you. Well, I got a loud voice. Yeah, <laughs> and you literally echo exactly what I say. And the yeah. the fruit by the foot. You know, you're so relaxed. You bring the candy. You bring everything. You and it, snacks. It, and the snacks. snacks are always important. Yeah, you, you make the corner and everything in the locker room so relaxed. And that's what that's probably my favorite thing about having you out there. Yeah, well, and having over 100 UFC and corners and uh, 15 world title fights, you know, it's easy to stay relaxed. Yep. And, uh, out of all those. Kind of second nature. All that experience, all that. Where, which one is your most memorable? Or uh, if you had to pick one fight, either you fought or you coached. Which one is the one that just stands out the most? Which one? Man, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. I mean, it's it's a big blur, you know. I mean, I was doing. I was cornering so much from week to week, but I would say uh, two of them would be when Cody won the world championship, and then uh, another one would be when Darren Elkins uh, knocked out Mursad Bektik, and he was down two rounds big, and uh, he knocked him out with the exact combination we were working the whole fight to hit him with against the fence. He's gonna go out a certain way. We're gonna kick him and hit him with the right hand. And Elkins finished him with that, and he had a mask of blood on him. And like, it, I've never, I've never lost it. You can, you can watch a uh, hundred of the UFC fights I've been in, where the crazy or that I've cornered, and you can watch me in the corner. And every time there's a drop or some Cody will drop a guy, or Elkins will drop a guy, or whoever will, Cynthia will, will go for a submission, the corner will stand up and go and, crazy. Yeah, and I will sit in the chair until it is over because. What the hell am I doing? Those are the rules, you know what I mean? There's, there's a rules to the corner. You know, the inspector's going to be telling you to sit down, down yep. doing this kind of crap. First of all, don't touch me. I'm following the rules, you know? And second of all, just because my fighter dropped someone, what does that mean? The fight has not been called off. You know, there's plenty mm-hmm. of times 
I'm, I mean, speaking of that fight where, where Cruz got dropped and he got kicked and the corner went crazy and I'm just sitting there, you know what I mean? Not till it's over, you know? Uh, so I, I would say that fight, I'd say Cody's fight and then El, uh, Elkin's fight for sure for, mm. for two that stand out. That, man, those are the good, very good reasons for them to stand out. Yeah. That's tight. You're working with Cynthia right now, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody else that you're working with, like in the pro level, that's doing or no? You know, now that I'm open, I'm actually opening a gym. Uh, you know, as we were talking about earlier, but now that I'm opening my own gym, it's the pro fight team has kind of been a, more of a secondary thought because that's what I'm good at, and I've uh, got a proven track rec- record with that coaching professionals. But for me, it's now that I, I have my own gym that I've designed myself and. I set everything up myself and built it uh, from nothing. I can decide how, you know, what to yeah. what to focus on. And I think I'm right now. I'm leaning more towards an amateur team on uh, mm. uh, than professionals, you know, because in five years my amateurs are going to be professionals. Yeah. In four years and three years, depending on their age, and uh, these people will have, you know, what's a, your a pedigree? Yeah. What's your goal with your gym? Tell us about your gym. Where is it at? What's your goal? What's your vision with your gym and the so, name, everything? Give us a whole 411. So my gym is the MFI, Martial Arts and Fitness Institute. It's in uh, West Sacramento. It's two miles from the state capitol. So where Gavin Newsom is passing all these ridiculous laws for California, it'll take us two, <laughs> two miles will be at the doorsteps, you know what I mean? Right, right at the capitol. And, and California has, or Sacramento has one of the most beautiful capitals in, of any, of any or Cal, yeah, California is, has, has Sacramento, California, the capital has one of the most beautiful capitals of any state, you know, in my opinion. It compares to the uh, the capital in D.C., the country's capital. It's amazing. Capitol Mall and Tower Bridge, you know, you're familiar yeah. with. And the, uh, of course, you're, uh, the uh, Golden One Center right there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're two miles from that, just over the Tower Bridge, next to Rayleigh's Field, yeah. actually, MFI. And it's a 13,000-square-foot building. Uh, That's huge. Yeah, it's Beautiful. it's massive. Yeah, it's massive. It's massive. It was no easy task securing the building, and uh, uh, it's all custom built. The, the design, there was an open floor plan. I designed everything myself, uh, and it, man, it's incredible. It just construction just finished up. You got to come check it out. Uh, David actually, I think he lives just yeah, across lives, the river from me. It. Yeah, I keep telling him to come over, but he's always too, too busy or whatnot. But one of these days, just come over anytime when I'm down there and check it out. But we just finished construction, um, and there's. The open, it, it was a completely open floor plan, and I had a locker, a locker room built, a men, women's locker room, a cleaning closet, and a 1,500 square foot hot kickboxing studio. So this is something new that doesn't doesn't exist. There's uh, on the West Coast, there's no hot kickboxing. So if you think of boxing or kickboxing, and then add heat to it. So just like yoga started out, just got popular on the West Coast, just yoga, and then they started doing heated yoga and and everything else. Um, as well as heated Pilates it's and fucking hard as and fuck. this, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but but if you think about it, you can get more bang for your buck because if you're in the, in the class for 50 minutes, it's like with the sweating, your calories and the, the work you're doing is, is going to be, you know, you're you're in the hot box getting it, the mm-hmm. burn box, and that's actually what it's called. It's called burn box, uh, hot kickboxing. Yeah. And uh, so, what's your vision with? with your gym what's what are you looking to establish what do you want to do what's so the main thing is to make west sac the fittest uh city in the world you know fittest city in california fittest city in uh the united states so definitely fittest city in the world and there's different ways we can go about tracking the progress we have you know from calories burnt to weight loss to activity timers and that kind of thing and we're going to plan that more but that's the main goal is uh fitness of the community and also to build a amateur program i mean I shouldn't even say amateur a kids program. Uh, I want to. I'm. I want to build the uh, best martial arts teams and combat sports teams from the ground level up, and then of course win all the UFC belts and yeah, makes one sense. FC belts and all the other belts, boxing belts and everything. Yeah. yeah. So you made. You have a, obviously a successful career in MMA and UFC and all that. What does it take to have a successful career in mixed martial arts? What does it take besides the skill? Obviously, you have to put in work and all that Dude, what what else what kind of tip or what what else you think you need to do or have to have a successful career man that's a tough one because careers careers can be derailed so easily 
And we've all seen that, very experienced with that. You know, a fighter come to the gym, you're like, man, this guy's gonna be world champ. And next, he gets a girlfriend, never see him again. Yeah, right? that's, that kind that's of thing. popular. Right? Yeah, that, that, that's the biggest one. I mean, I mean, the the temptation for young, strong male fighters, and then they, you know, as soon as they start getting any kind yeah. of clout, well, let's say let's say they're they're already fighting professionally or something. What what, what would be your tip to them to keep their their shit straight and all that? What would you tell them? Man, I, don't, I mean, one piece of advice would just be, uh, I don't know, consistent in your training. A little bit done, you know, every day compared to yeah. uh, a couple hour workout one time a week. Mm. Or and and the other thing too is is there's no there's no secret move that you're gonna learn. There's no secret move. You need to just get in dog shape and go fight that man. You know what I mean? Or or woman. Like there's no secret move. There's not a coach out there who's gonna show you like a move that just turns someone off. Although that happens all the time, and it just happened on Saturday with uh, with Henry Hooft and uh, uh, Gilbert Burns. Did you see that fight? No, I didn't. So it was uh, he was fighting Demian Maya, who's a great jiu-jitsu fighter. And Henry Hooft posted the video today. He's a great kickboxing coach out of mm -hmm. Florida, and uh, he showed uh, he was pe uh, he was standing southpaw, just pe like tossing his jab up, and Gilbert was left hooking over the top. And a minute into his fight, Gilbert lands that punch and knocks Maya out. You know, it was amazing. So, I mean, that's good coaching. That's that's uh, that you know, that's a, that's a good plan coming together. But you know, they've worked together for years. They're both high level experts of their field. This this isn't something that happens. You're not going to find a guy who says, "Here, do this and and win the fight." You mm -hmm. know, necessarily. You have to train as hard as you can. And. Uh, yeah, so I would say I would say uh, consistency. Consistency, yeah. yeah and then, and then is, being smart huge. and find, finding the finding the right people around you as well. I mean, a lot of people are yeah. looking to to football players to teach them how to fight. You know what I mean? Like they're doing they're spending more time doing conditioning than sparring, hitting the bag, skipping rope, working on their cardio, this kind of stuff. They're more just pushing sleds and doing this stuff. You know, yeah, when, they're not when, really working on the art. Yeah, exactly. So I got a question for you. So in, in MMA. What would you say is the biggest tools in boxing that are not taken advantage of by MMA fighters? The distance. The, I, I always feel when I, when I watch MMA fights and I watch people that have good boxing ask, or have okay boxing, well, the biggest thing that I feel if I was fighting, what I think they should do is they don't know how to punch moving backwards when someone's coming at them. Yeah. Like, let's say someone's going to take your legs or someone's coming yeah. in to do something. Punch moving backwards. Don't sit there. Punch moving backwards and then move out the way with their hands and feet doing it together. Yeah. I feel like when I watch MMA, they anytime they're boxing, they either stepping forward with it or they're staying they're stationary. That's one thing that I would say. That would yeah. be my tip. Yeah. Um, the reason why I asked you the question as far as what do you need to have a successful career is because in boxing you can have a very talented young man very consistent everything male or female but if you don't have a team as far as marketing business and there's someone behind you it's not yeah. going to be a very successful career no matter how talented and how good you are you know what i mean yeah that's why i asked you i don't know if it was the same with mma or with ufc do you feel like you need to have uh a you need to draw a crowd pretty much like for example in boxing, if you draw a crowd and you sell tickets, you can get put in good situations just because you sell tickets. Not necessarily yeah. because you're good. Yeah. It's because you sell tickets. Do you feel like in the UFC is like that also? or in, in, in not I, mean, just the, I would say definitely to an extent. I mean, obviously, uh, if you go in there and talk trash and be disrespectful and more and more people talk about you, they treat you a little better. It's mm -hmm. kind of a weird reward system the UFC has at, at a higher level. But at the the it entry didn't. level, the yeah. entry level is you can you can not you know, put together five fights, six five to nine fights, you can put this together on a local circuit and the last guy, number nine or number five on your on your, your first professional fights, if he's legit and you put him away, you could be in the UFC next fight. And you can show up by yourself. I've seen this done and win uh, by knockout and change your whole life. I've seen this done by uh, Yuri Alcantara. He is a, I think he, he fought Ricardo Lamas. He's a well-known guy, fought local guy, Josh Emmett, and uh, fought Chad Mendez, this guy, Ricardo Lamas. He's been mm. at the top of the 145ers for a long time. But this was back in WC. Yuri Alcantara from Brazil shows up 
no coach, doesn't speak any English, had no one there with him, and he jumped knees, knocks out Ricardo Lamas in the first round, didn't cut no weight, just all on his own. So, that, I mean, the the dream is still alive for UFC fighters, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he, he went on and had a career. He had a, he had a great career. Uh, and I think that's – Great guy. But yeah. you can break into, into the UFC like that, where in boxing – It's very it, difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. Yeah, you can't really you – can, you could knock somebody out and – and because it happened, it happened with um, uh, multiple times with with dudes, but it didn't happen their first few fights like off fresh off the boat. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It was like they were already thirty fights in. You know what yeah. I mean? It takes it's a lot harder. You can't really sneak in like that. You're not gonna fight a big name dude if you haven't really done anything in career yet. If you haven't, yeah. if you're not twenty thirty five vet yet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's it's harder. It That's, is doable, it, but it is a lot harder. Cause like like it seems like. But, you know, in boxing, you have to put the career together, make the name, do all this stuff, and then right at the end, the promoter comes, trade picks you, and if you're successful, it's off to the races. You you know, yeah, you've exactly. done it. But if not, they'll just drop you and get someone else. Yep. And there's enough guys fighting to get to the top where if you look at 115-pound girls or 125, 125-pound girls in the UFC, if you're a college athlete and you want to go to the UFC, if, if you're a college-level athlete, you know, come to my gym, we'll, we'll train. And, you know, if you're – if you're easy on the eyes, you'll be in the UFC in six months. You know what I mean? You have three, four fights you're fighting in the UFC at this level. So it's, it's kind of like a gold rush of fighting. That's why a lot of people are getting into it. But um, Yeah, I can see. I, it's, the, it's not as – it doesn't take as – it's not a – journey is not as long. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and It's I probably mean, because, too, because you have so many tools that you can get away with hurting somebody. You know what I mean? Like it's – if you can't punch them, fucking kick them. If you yeah. can't kick them, fucking choke them out. You can yeah. do that. Versus with boxing, it's so hard to try to knock somebody out. Yeah. And if they, they've been doing it for so long also, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. then if, if you if you have three or four fights in boxing, it really shows. Hell right? yeah. Right? You're going to be like, ugh. Yeah, you, you know, can you hella be skilled. see it. You got to be skilled, highly skilled with your hands to make a box, or, or completely brutal with power, or devastating or aggressive, to make a boxing fight entertaining because the sport has had such, I mean, it's been around forever. It's credential. We've had, we've had, the greats and seeing them fight so you better keep up a level of it you know what i mean that's why you have guys like canelo and you know just superstars because yep. they can they can do it do you remember back well i remember very clearly but this was probably like oh four oh five oh six where a lot of people would compare boxing and mma i don't think people do it as much now but it was very very popular do you remember that of course you remember joe rogan saying that uh Ronda Rousey beat Floyd Mayweather in a street fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, this is this is what. So this guy's the, you know, I don't know. So do you agree with that? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. What? I think so, Floyd's undefeated against women. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> in street one. fights. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. You're right. So I've always felt like it's really unfair to judge something like that. Like I, I don't think any MMA guy would do success be. Like, just with no training or nothing, just walk into boxing and, and become a world champion without training. And I don't think no boxer can just walk into the UFC and be a UFC champion without any, like, really respecting the, the sport. You know what I mean? Because there's so much more to both sports that you can't really just, okay, I'm going to knock this guy out and boom. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. And um, I've, I've always felt like it was unfair to really compare the both like that. I thought I don't know. I'm I ask you for your opinion. If it was a street fight, and you obviously do not know anything about a person, because usually in street fights you don't know the whole background on them. Yeah. And you guys are fighting. I you can't really say one person has because it's really a whoever's day it is. I mean, an MMA dude may win, the boxer may win, and it, it could be either or. Obviously, the mixed martial artist has a lot more tools and all that. But then when you think about it, it's a street fight. Shoot, motherfuckers probably hitting you with bottles, doing all sorts of shit. Yeah. It's not really just about. Well, I mean, it's, it's you, you just got done saying it's hard to compare under these set rules. Yeah. Now take those rules out and add any variable and get stomped out or hit with a bottle or whatever. It's any it's anyone's game. But is a trained guy going to be better suited for that situation yeah. than an untrained guy? Of course. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and 
you know, if the, if you if there is a grappling situation, who's going to be better prepared? The MMA fighter, you know what I mean? If yep. it goes as straight up, Mark is a Queensberry, squared off in the street, you know what I mean? Hopefully there's not a head kick or something, but also you don't know if this guy's going to put a jab or a cross on you that it will kill you, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, that's anyone's game is, yeah. is street fighting, you know? And that's like, it's funny because in MMA, they just were talking about that. Khabib was talking to Tony Ferguson about street fighting. He's like, what are you, American? You know, fight in the street. <laughs> I'm like... What, what does that mean? What, what do you, wait, are there streets in Dagestan? I mean, there's there's some dirt roads and stuff, but what do you mean you're fighting in the streets, walking through the, the stone huts and beating up other people? What are you talking about? He's like, oh, we fight in gym, Khabib. Like, you mean in high school you were fighting in the gym? That's not street fights, you know what I mean? But Tony Ferguson, he's representing America. He's representing America. He says, oh, I'm from Oxnard. And I'm like, huh? What kind of street fights happen in Oxnard? You know, but I'm going with USA on that, you know. Hopefully yeah. Ferguson... That's true. Takes out Khabib, you know. You got to go with go with Ferguson on that. I, Even I though I'm not the, I'm not a Ferguson fan in any in any sense. The guy's a, a weirdo, you know. There was a recent fight. Those girls, <laughs> they said it was a probably a Hall of Fame fight recently. It was yeah. like a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, it was uh, Joanna versus Wee Lay. I didn't watch it, but I saw the pictures of the girl and God. Damn, they yeah. looked like they went at it. What do you think about that fight? I think that fight really shows how uneducated people are when it comes to fighting, especially the MMA fan base. The MMA fan base has no idea what they're watching. That fight was an okay round contested kickboxing match to call that the greatest fight ever it just shows how how these guys don't even know what they're watching they don't even know what they're watching that was a highly contested kickboxing fight it was right there we lay almost won the round but then joanna just took it and then joanna just took the round over we lay and it went like that and and i wa i actually watched the fight i was watching it on a a choppy version of it you know <laughs> so uh, uh it was it, i watched the fight and i was like ah you know who won that me it's a here's 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 how how the ties would say it you know the the home the home, the birthplace of muay thai this is how they would describe the fight they'd say uh you know hey ladies good fight you know good it's it is what it is it's 215 pound girls beating the crap out of each other for, for 25 minutes. It is not the greatest MMA fight of all time. How are you going to be the greatest MMA fight of all time with no groundwork? You know what I mean? Yeah. With zero grappling. So what you have is a kickboxing match that was real close. You know, here's things that make a great fight to me. Someone coming back from adversity. A great fight is, is Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard. Frankie Edgar, face is destroyed. He's all beat up. <laughs> you yeah. know, Mark Henry style, he's, 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 he's going in there, and he's got such good cardio. He's taking this damage. Then, bam, he lands a punch and knocks out Maynard. Like, holy cow, that's a great fight. He was on the receiving end of it. He never gave up, and he came back from adversity. He was hurt himself. That, that's, that's an amazing fight, you know. Uh, another thing, amazing fight, is, is a blistering pace, like, Two people going at a blistering pace the whole time. And another thing that makes a great fight is the moves from, from ground to stand up to the different techniques. This was a kickboxing fight. They were punching each other. Homegirl was trying to land her left hook. The other girl was throwing her kick and they bounced around and 25 minutes this went on and, and Joanna's face was swollen up. She looked like uh, uh, that shit, she looked beat up. She she looked bad, and I feel I feel bad for her because she's she's doing this thing, uh, you know. And I was all for Joanna when she came out of Poland. She came out of Poland. She was she's a mean Polish lady, you know what I mean? Poland Poland's a country that's kind of ha I mean Poland's a country with no natural borders, surrounded by enemies in Europe. They got Russia over here and Germany over here, and they've been a sovereign country for 180 or. For 20 years out of the last 200 years, Poland. Joanna comes over here training in the forest with these crazy Polish people uh, running running up, up these mountains outside. I'm like, yeah, this chick is awesome. She wins the belt. First uh, strawweight queen, or no, beats Carla Esparza, defends it six times, and then all of a sudden she's an Instagram model in Florida. You know what I mean? Loses the belt. She's an Instagram model. She's doing all this stuff. Like, And it's funny because Dana said that before the fight. He's Dana White. He said... We lay, he goes, I, I think we lays every time she posts on Instagram is her training and strength and conditioning and like beating up these Chinese guys over there. And, and then every time Joanna posts on, it's like a selfie. She's at the beach. You know what I mean? She got uh, plastic surgery on her chest, you know? And this is something to me is if you're a fighter who has to make a weight, what are you doing getting silicone implants? How much do those weigh? You know what I mean? So you, you gotta, you gotta think of what are their motivation? So at when she did that, you know, She's more interested in Instagram. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to be just a dogfight world champion, you know, and take and hold that forever, you got you gotta 
understand what your priorities are. And her, and you know, I mean, priorities. even Dana White said it was was a, a, a she was a, a, like an Instagram model. And I think I think the same thing. But the, but it was it was sad for me to see that because she's so focused on her image and stuff now to have her heads to have a girl with her head swollen like that on national TV and she still has like some real bad drainage and stuff like that. And it's like, man, that, you know, fighting is brutal. Fighting yeah. is brutal. And you know, it's not, it, it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, a, quite the contrast trying to be a model and a fighter, right? We're fighters because we can't sing and we can't dance. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're not fighters because we have all these other options. You know what yeah. I mean? That's why, that's why, you know, speaking of that, I don't know if you saw the, the new Rocky, uh, oh, the Creed. Yeah, Creed 2. I, I walked away. Dude, I, I could not. I walked out. Hey, I started the movie and you. I walked out. Thank you. The movie's horrible. You, hey, you did it it's, too? It's a rich kid, a yeah. rich kid who's got nothing to do and he, he's not okay with his life because he's rich and has no, no reason to live. So he starts fighting. That's not how fighters. Yeah. That's, that's completely backwards of what a fighter is. Yeah. A fighter is someone who. See, this, who, this is why I like you. Who, when, when it comes down to it, will fight for everything physically if he has to you yeah. know what i mean to, i walked for out status for my else. wife was like are you serious thank i'm like i can't take this shit thank you can't take and i left it was like 20 minutes in we walked out man and <laughs> so i watched the whole thing when i get when i get in a movie like that i watch it and i uh, you know and it's bad just to mock it you know what i mean yeah. i'm like this is this is the worst thing ever in that movie his his uh uh he his girlfriend she uses him to like sing a song at his entrance I'm like, she's playing off his career, piggybacking off his career as a fighter to try to push her her music career. I'm like, what is this, man? It, it's so it's 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 strange, man. From I didn't the, get the Rocky, that far. from Rocky <laughs> One, from Rocky One, you know, to yeah, to, to that. that. Yeah, to like, that. I think they're trying to force the issue too much. They just gotta leave it alone. Because I don't. Yeah, they just put leave. the series to bed. Yeah, put it to bed. They're just trying to push it too much. You know, if you think about it, and it, and it would be like. Rocky's the trainer, you know, like like they tried since Rocky Five, you know, yeah. that he, he's a trainer and and uh, the kid's coming up and he he's coming from a bad situation and he gets the people behind him and he does a montage of training. I'm all for that, yeah. but how about you know he he's li he leaves his mom, his mom makes him mad because she she makes him do his chores or something. He's living in like a mansion, you know, and then goes down to Mexico to fight. I'm like, no rich kid is gonna do that, you know, so. Wow. Yeah. So now we Rocky. know how he really feels about yeah. that fight. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and about Creed. <laughs> yeah. All right. But all right, I'm going to ask you some off the wall questions all that right. have nothing to do with fighting, nothing with that. And all you're right. going to answer the first thing that pops up. Okay. What's your favorite restaurant in Sac? Restaurant? I have to say Whitey's. Really? Yes. Yeah, next to, oh, it's in West Sac. It's across the gym. You can go there and get a uh, triple cheeseburger for, for five bucks. It's got three huge patties on it. It's like a blue collar place. It's amazing. I mean, all the, all the, all the, uh, the workers come through there, you know, West Sac is very industrious and their food is fast. It's fresh. And you eat, man, you get a banana split, you know, uh, a banana split for five bucks. And Check it is like, it, it's Diet, amazing. Maybe it's amazing. I, I need to go in there. <laughs> yeah. What's something about Justin Buckles people don't know about? too much about only besides some share something about you no one really knows man I, uh my dad killed a polar bear yeah really? uh -huh. like bare hands or what did he, was, <laughs> yeah, he jumped he, on its back chokehold how did he kill no, him he shot it oh yeah, shit shot it that's interesting killed it off point hope and uh, like 200 miles off the coast on the sea ice yeah he's probably one of the only you know white guys that's ever ever shot a polar bear or anything like that you know he got a, he got a tag on it and i don't know what year it was but that is interesting it's a rug yeah in my uh uh in his house up there in my old room that's turned dope, into a bro. rug yeah all right man well i wanted to thank you for coming on here man. oh that's it man i was just getting warmed up no, no yeah thank you guys hey thank you guys for listening and we out